Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi, the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after being, many of us, without the Eucharist for more than 90 days, what a fitting day to return to Mass to receive the precious Eucharist. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries and to receive Christ into our hearts, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so as to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, 
but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Our response is, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders, with the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the letter, first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate 
and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome. It is good that you are here. Over the past three months, as you have watched Mass, and some of you still watching Mass, from your homes, one of the comments that I've received most of all was how much people missed the Eucharist. Of course, they miss seeing each other, they miss getting together, but most of all, they miss the Eucharist. And that's not surprising, because the Eucharist is the core of our faith. It's what separates Catholics from other Christians. The very belief that this is the true body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord each time on this altar at every Mass we celebrate throughout the world. A theologian about 60, oh, excuse me, about 70 years ago put it this way, very simply, the Eucharist makes the church. The Eucharist makes the church. And when people ask me, why did you become a priest? In fact, why did you even stay Catholic given all of the controversy in the Catholic church over the past 20 years or so? I would tell them, well, you know, the church is not the failings of the leaders. The church is not the failings of the clergy or the failings of the faithful. The Eucharist makes the church. That's who we are as Catholics. That's what distinguishes us. That's what hopefully transforms us from everyday living to living as Catholic Christians, to representing who Jesus Christ is to the world who doesn't know him, who doesn't want to know him, who rejects him, who scoffs at him. We carry him with us. When we leave here today, having Jesus in us, we take him to the world as transformed men and women, boys and girls, who can make his presence known in a dark and tired, discouraged world. That's what we're called to. That's what we're called to through our baptism. That's what the Eucharist can do for us. That's the nourishment, the energy we've been missing by not receiving the precious Eucharist. This feast came about because in the 13th century, Catholics were doubting whether this was in fact the body and blood of our Lord. And the Pope established the feast of Corpus Christi to highlight the significance, the amazing miracle of the Eucharist. And in Europe at the time, they would parade with a giant monstrance, they would parade the Eucharist through the town and people would venerate it standing alongside of the roadways. And in some towns, they still have these Eucharistic processions. And it's a great tribute to the miracle of the sacrifice of our Lord. Unfortunately, today, some Catholics, roughly 70% of Catholics, when asked in a poll, and I don't always believe in polls, so I'm not sure how true this is, but according to the poll, 70% of Catholics said, it's not really the body and blood. It's just a symbol. But you know, that would ignore all four Gospels. That would ignore the reading we heard from Paul today that specifically said it was participation in the body and blood of our Lord. 
would ignore what we, the song we sung at the beginning, one bread, one body. We are the body of Christ because we receive the body of Christ. And we can never forget what a gift that is. When Jesus says today, I am the living bread, he knew that his comment to these Jewish crowds was going to be controversial. When he says, unless you eat of my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. He knew people were going to say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You're a good guy. We like you. We like listening to you. But that's too much. I can't do it. Can't, can't go down that eat your bread, eat your body, and drink your blood stuff. But he didn't say, wait, 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 I'm just talking figuratively. He stuck to it. The apostles stuck to it. The early church stuck to it. Everyone associated with Jesus that was a true believer accepted and believed and counted on the fact that that is the body and blood and soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And through the laying on of hands from the bishop and the consecration of my own hands last Saturday, I have the opportunity now to share in something that's been done by priests for 2,000 years in the Catholic Church, to take ordinary bread and wine and transform it through the grace of the Holy Spirit to transform it into the body and blood of our Lord. And it's important because the Eucharist makes the church. So the question becomes, how do we convince all of these other people who think it's a symbol, who think we're pretending it's a recreation or a reenactment, like a civil war battle where nobody really dies, they just reenact it every year? No, this is not a reenactment. This is Jesus Christ giving of himself to us right here right now in this very place. And he invites us to take him with us out there. And when he said, take and eat, this is my body. Take and drink, this is my blood. He meant it. He wasn't confusing in the language he used. He meant those very words. So what do we need to do? How do we take on this awesome responsibility of being the bridge from the people out there to Jesus Christ? How do we do it? How do we use the Eucharist to drive our purpose in the world? Well, we're transformed. But it takes more than just the words of saying, oh, I've received the Eucharist, I am transformed. We have to act. We have to be better than we were. We have to act differently than we did before we had Jesus in our, in our hearts, in our souls. That's our responsibility. There's a line attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, which says, proclaim the gospel always, and when necessary, use words. I tend to like a song from the 60s, a Christian song called, they'll know we are Christian by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. What does it mean? It means how we act is a greater tribute to this amazing sacrifice to the presence of our Lord in us than anything we can say. You've heard of people who talk a good game, but they don't, they don't walk the walk. We are asked, we are charged with the responsibility 
to walk the walk. Go out and prove to people in our daily lives that we know Jesus and we follow him and we bring that knowledge to them. And so if you're at school or at work or at the supermarket or wherever you are, you can be an evangelist for our Lord simply by the way you act, the common courtesy you exchange, letting somebody in front of you in line. When the, when the um, cashier gives you too much change, you say, I'm sorry, that's, you gave me a $10 too much. And you give it back. When you see somebody being bullied at school, you say to the other person, hey, that's not nice. That's how they'll know we are Christians. That's how they'll know that we really have something here. Something better than anyone else can possibly have who does not partake of the body and blood of our Lord. Because this is perfection here. This is our share of perfection every time we receive our Lord. It's the perfect sacrifice. And for that moment, as the Lord penetrates into our bodies, we have that perfection within us. And it's up to us to continue it as we leave. And so, we must become what we receive. We must believe it, and we must become it. And in that way, we will go out there and we will convince everyone that indeed the Eucharist does make the church. Instead of the creed, we will recite our baptismal vows. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus is the living bread who nourishes and sustains us. Let us turn to him with our needs. For the Holy Father, bishops, priests, deacons, and laity, may we, through many, live out our oneness as members of the mystical body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who will receive the body of Christ today at this Mass, may they be transformed more and more into Christ's loving presence in this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For an increase in a deep, lasting empathy among all citizens toward those who experience oppression, discrimination, and brutality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for those who are suffering in the current outbreak of sickness, that they might be healed, and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and suffering of our St. Norbert Faith community, especially Leonardo Turan, Amber Gray Bridges, Peggy Musico, Andrea Mock Silva, Heidi Marita, Joyce Ward, Marcelo Reina, Ken Vodder, Jose Romero, Luis Chete, Jose Espinosa, Millie Hip, Esibio Mesa, Aaron Mares Rodriguez, and Art Perry, that they will find comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our prayer. For all who have died, especially Rita Wilk, Josefina de Vera, Josefina Alas, Frank and Nancy Schock, Joey Sanchez Mesa, and Christian Marcelo. May they be raised to eternal life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, you give us lasting food for our souls. In your mercy, answer the prayers we ask of you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we will recite the prayer for the year of prayer. O oh God, may every person within the Diocese of Orange come to personally know and love our Lord Jesus Christ. May they grow in maturity as a missionary disciple of Christ become engaged in the full life and mission of the church, and joyfully use his or her gifts to share the good news and build up the kingdom of God for the salvation of souls through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Those of you who are here in the church, on your way in, were invited to place your donation in the basket. If you didn't have an opportunity to do that, please do that um, on the way out. Those of you who are at home watching us on the live stream, there are three ways to give to St. Norbert Church. One is to visit the web page and click on the basket, which says donate now. The other is to use the Give Plus app on your phone, and you can also text a message to the number on the screen. In each case, you will use your debit or credit card to make your donation. You have been incredibly generous through this time of shutdown. We thank you for that. We need your continued generosity. One thing that we've noticed is that our collections have been sort of up and down. Good one week, not so good the next. We need a little more consistency so we can begin to count on a flow of cash, which will help us to pay our staff, keep the lights on, keep the place air conditioned as the hot summer months come along. So we do appreciate your contribu contributions and we ask for your continued generosity. Thank you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in the mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and with end, without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and Timothy and Tan, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are watching at home, we say the act of spiritual communion. My, my Jesus. Jesus I believe, I believe that, that you are, are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, and I desire, desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we will distribute communion to all of you after the final blessing, and you'll be instructed by the ushers which station to go to, and then after you receive, please reverently depart the church. Take a moment to welcome Jesus into your heart. body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. We will pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. Be our, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, thou Prince O Prince of the, of the Heavenly Host, host by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.